Welcome to another great episode of American Rifleman Television, brought to you by Cheaper Than Dirt, your ultimate shooting sports discounter. Now, I get a lot of questions from guys saying, hey, where do I get my U.S. government M1 Garand? Well, it's not necessarily from the U.S. government anymore. It's through the Civilian Marksmanship Program. Now, this week in our feature story, Marty Morgan went to Anniston, Alabama, the home of the CMP, to show you how they sort Garands, ammo, and much, much more. Customers come in, uh, we offer them up to, uh, gauging tools here if they, if they ask to use them. Uh, we lend those to them and they gauge the rifles and actually hand select and pick out their own rifle before purchasing. For this week's Rifleman Review, I'm heading to the range with a DSA Paratactical. Now, this is an FN FAL with a folding stock. In this week's Eye of This Old Gun, we look at the Lewis Light Machine Gun, invented of course by Colonel Isaac Newton Lewis. But for now, let's head to Anniston and the Civilian Marksmanship Program. This week on American Rifleman Television, we're in Anniston, Alabama. And if you're a collector of historic military rifles, you know Anniston, Alabama because it's the home of the CMP South. That's the Civilian Marksmanship Program, the U.S. government program that sells historic weapons like the M1 Garand rifles that are crated behind me to a marksmanship public. So stay tuned. We're going to follow a little bit of everything that they do here at CMP South. In 1903, uh, Teddy Roosevelt, during the Spanish-American War, wasn't quite satisfied with the uh, marksmanship of the soldiers under his command. So when he had the opportunity, he uh, created, or had Congress create, the National Board for the Promotion of Rifle Practice back in 1903, and charged the board with the conduct of a civilian marksmanship program to train uh, civilians in the use of service rifles just in case the balloon ever went up there'd be a, a cadre that could be called on to train the trainers. The uh, program uh, existed under the Department of the Army under the Director of Civilian Marksmanship until October 1996 at which time Congress in Public Law 104-106 abolished the National Board and created the Corporation for the Promotion of Rifle Practice and Firearm Safety and charge the corporation with the conduct of the civilian marksmanship program. We receive rifles from the Army. Um, what we do, our, our first process is we do a serial number verification, hard metal verification of the serial number. We go ahead and do a cursory sort of the rifle by manufacturer, receiver, manufacturer, and a cursory grade of the rifle. Now these rifles can be covered in cosmoline, they may or may not be covered in cosmoline. So there again, this is a cursory sort, but the serial number verification is the most important part. They go into short-term storage, then they go, if they're greasy, if they're covered in cosmoline, they go through our degreasing process. If they don't have to go through degreasing, they're ready for the armory to work. We're here in the York Building. It used to be a casket factory, but this is one of the more important buildings at CMP South, and I'm with Rodney Carty. Now, Rodney, I'm looking around this room, and I'm seeing something being done to a very large number of M1 Garand operating rods. Could you tell me a little bit about what's going on here? Sure. This is our degreasing operation at Civilian Marksmanship Program. Any weapon that needs or parts also need to be degreased, uh, cleaned up, have to go through this process. And what we do is an ultrasonic batch. They are, they're heated up to 160 degrees per bat. The weapons are put in the baskets, they're dipped into the bats, and they're ultrasonic, and there's also a grease cutting detergent in each, in the first two bats. And they'll take the grease off, uh, then they put it into a hot water rinse. After that, it goes into a light oil, weapons light oil, where it recoats with a light oil. The grease is gone, they're light oil, and then they'll take them out and they'll blow them off, and then we rebox them again, put them back. And at that point, they go to the armory to be worked on. But if you have too much grease on them, it's impossible for the armor to gauge them properly, like the, the muzzle or the chamber, headspace, things like that. If there's too much grease, they don't get a, a good reading on their gauges. So that's why we do this here. Well, the worst condition uh, when we receive items from the Army, we know there's 100 serial numbers in the box, for example. Uh, the worst condition would be nothing other than a receiver in that box. No, no rifle at all, no barrel, no stock, 
no trigger group, just a receiver because that serial number receiver to the Army is a rifle. And that, w that would be worse condition. And it runs the gamut from, from that very poor state or poor condition of rifle to a rifle that's never been issued. Um, and it's obvious it's never been issued because it's still got its factory grease on it. It's still got the uh, preservative straw in the barrel. It's still wrapped in the, the silver uh, paper that they were wrapped in in that time here in 53, 54. Uh, just an all original, complete, unissued rifle that's in the box from the manufacturer, actually in the manufacturer box. That's, that's the, the extremes from one end to the other. American Rifleman is brought to you by All right, Thomas, now, um, I'm noticing that this room has a lot of rebuilding activity going on, and could you please just kind of walk through the process of what they're doing in this room right now? Well, most of the weapons we get in, we work most of the M1 Garands uh, in this armory here. Uh, we get them in either a full rifle that has been through rebuild or uh, came back from other countries sometimes that uh, we go through the process. We take each rifle down, check it, check the bore, check the muzzle, check the throat erosion. Uh, check the uh, chamber, then uh, we rebuild the rifle to uh, military specifications. And each rifle is test fired and then boxed uh, according to what grade it is, whether it's service grade or a field grade or a correct grade or different grades that we sell uh, on our website. Uh, sometimes we take, uh, when we accumulate a bunch of real good receivers for whatever reason, like uh, the Winchester receivers we're working on now, We'll take those and uh, the good receivers and build those up into, into full rifles. But uh, the uh, 22s and the other rifles, uh, when we have M1 carbines, we work those in here also. But uh, mostly right now, it's just the M1s. Now, uh, behind me is where we build our new rifles. These are reconditioned. The parts are either new or have been reparked with new wood, new walnut stocks. And, uh, and these are also test fired. And these are our, our premium guns. Uh, more like a match rifle, but not really a match rifle. They're good shooters. Uh, you got a new barrel and everything on them. So that's basically what we do in this room. On the sales side of the house, customer fills out the appropriate paperwork, sends in the appropriate documentation, uh, which is proof of citizenship, membership, proof of membership in an affiliated club, proof of marksmanship, and the appropriate paperwork filled out, completed, uh, documented, and notarized for a thorough and complete background check. And the customer has to successfully complete that thorough and complete background check. Once all that's done, the order's processed. In uh, October 96, when the, uh, uh, when the corporation was established by Congress, the, we were charged with the conduct of the civilian marksmanship program with priority on youth. And that's where most of our focus have been, has been. Even though we sell service rifles and uh, we conduct the national matches, which is required by the law, most of our focus is on youth. We work with the JROTC, with the 4-H, with the Boy Scouts, uh, and that's where most of our training goes, is to the youth. Our market segment is really diversified over the different ages, uh, but the majority of our purchasers are, are 30 and beyond, we'll say it that way. But we, we do reach that youth uh, sector and the way we reach it is through competition. Um, that's really driven by our competitions which we have pushed tremendously from the time I've been with the, the organization to current. I think it's important. Uh, I think the safety aspect of marksmanship, the, the thought process that goes in to correct marksmanship uh, is where the future of the program lies. Uh, teaching folks how to properly use firearms in a safe, controlled manner is where this program's future lies. Uh, training youth in the proper use of, of firearms and the safe use of firearms and the constructive use of firearms 
is where the, the, the future of the program lies. Uh, the world, you know, uh, kids see firearms used improperly every day. All they gotta do is turn the TV on. Uh, well, that's not us. Uh, the Civilian Marksmanship Program teaches young folks uh, the constructive use of firearms and the proper and appropriate use of firearms. Don't go anywhere because when we come back, I'm heading to the range with a DS Arms FN FAL Paratactical.